Okay, today we're going to talk about light and quantized energy. Quantized meaning quantity, which means a number, which means yes, you're going to do math. Okay, now let's talk about certain elements emit visible light when heated in a flame, which brings up the point that yes, you are going to be doing the flame test lab, which means yes, you're going to be able to put these elements in a flame. Yes, you get to play with fire and burn them. I know some of you boys are looking forward to this one. It'll be either Thursday or Friday. Okay. But certain amounts, emit, they emit the visible light. And you can see it. Each element emits a different color. So some are pink, some are red, some are blue, some are white, some are yellow. It's really pretty cool. Okay, analysis of the emitted light reveals that an element's chemical behavior is related to the arrangement of electrons in its atoms, which is pretty much why this whole unit's called electrons and atoms. <laughs> we get to study them. Now, visible light is a type of electromagnetic radiation. And if you took ICP, we did stuff, at least I did. I don't know about the other three, but I think they did too. Did stuff with the electromagnetic spectrum. So this part should not be totally new to you. Electromagnetic radiation is a form of energy that acts like a wave. Okay, so let's talk about the characteristics of waves. We did a whole unit on waves in ICP, so I know most of you guys remember it, unless, of course, you had biology, which eh, most of you probably had ICP, and then biology. Okay, so all waves can be described by several characteristics. There's wavelength, which is the shortest distance between equivalent points on a continuous wave. The unit is some sort of distance, like meters, millimeters, centimeters. The two most commonly used are meters and millimeters. Every once in a while we'll use centimeters, but that's only if it's a rather, well, it's, it's a kind of in between the meters and, and millimeters. Um, frequency is the number of waves that pass a given point per second. In other words, it's how fast it's going. Unit is hertz or one over seconds. Okay. We have amplitude. Amplitude is the wave's height from the origin to a crest or a trough. Crest is the highest point. Trough is the lowest point. Okay, I don't know what went on here. But, oh, shoot. I guess I should erase. Okay. See, so I don't know what went on here, but something moved around. Okay, so here's our little wave picture. Now, We've got a bunch of things on here. First off, we have the wavelength. Now, if you'll notice, it can be between the two crests or the two troughs. It's just not between a crest and a trough. Okay? So it's how long from the beginning of one wave to the beginning of the next wave. Um, amplitude is this one between the origin and either a crest. Or you can have the amplitude going from the origin to the trough. Either way, it's the same distance. Okay, and then, of course, you know, the top is the crest and the bottom is the trough. So hopefully you understand this because on Wednesday we have a quiz. And guess what? You get to label it just like this picture. So I would absolutely know this picture. Little picture. Whoops. Now we're going to talk about the wave equation. Now, frequency and wavelength. Yeah, frequency and wavelength are related in an equation that describes the speed of light. And here we go. Now that little upside down Y looking thing is called lambda, okay? And the little V shaped thing is called nu. So you'll be hearing me call it lambda and nu because those are Greek letters. Now C itself is the speed of light in a vacuum and that has a number that is known. Guess what, for the test, you might wanna know it. 3.00 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. Now, the speed of light is the product of a wave's frequency and wavelength. Okay, so you multiply those two together, you get the speed of light. Now, you know I am not going to have you calculate the speed of light because you know what it is. Okay? You're going to be calculating frequency. So all, though the speed of all electromagnetic waves are the same in a vacuum, oh yeah, let's highlight electromagnetic waves, um, their wavelengths and frequencies vary. So we're gonna rearrange this equation. Now I know you guys love moving variables around. So first I'm gonna write it down. So C equals lambda nu. 
Now I'm going to write it the other way around because sometimes it makes it easier. So lambda nu equals c. Now if we want to solve for lambda, say we want the wavelength, we're going to divide both sides by nu. Okay, that's going to cancel out. So now we have lambda equals c divided by nu. And we can do the same thing for frequency or the nu variable. Just divide both sides by lambda, and we get nu equals c divided by lambda. Okay, so these are your two equations. Lambda is wavelength, and nu is frequency. So just know, really, they look the same. So if you're given a frequency or given a wavelength, just put the speed of light over top of whatever number you're given, and that will be, you'll be able to calculate the rest of it. Okay? That's pretty much simple. Now there is another equation that we use and eventually we'll get to it later where it uses this and something else, but don't worry about it just now. Okay, so let's look at our little picture. Oh, I forgot. Yeah, well, um, because of these relationships, we can see that the lower the frequency of a wave, the longer the wavelength. And this, this picture shows you that. So if you look here, we got the longer wavelength, so the first one's got the longer wavelength and the lower frequency. That means it passes by that point l the least amount of times, you know, less times. So it takes longer to get there. So when the wavelength is longer, your speed's going to be slower because it takes longer to get there. So, and if you have a shorter wavelength, okay, it's a higher pitch sound is what it is, really. It's a higher frequency. More of those waves can pass that point. So hopefully this picture helps you with that. Okay, so let's talk about the electromagnetic spectrum itself. Okay, the electromagnetic spectrum includes all forms of electromagnetic radiation with the only difference in the types of radiation being their frequencies and wavelengths. Okay, and that's the one we kind of put in the thing. Okay, so we've got this picture. Now this picture is on the back of your notes. So this goes in order from lowest or longest wavelength. So this is longest wavelength. To all the way to the shortest wavelength. Okay. Now, it starts out at radio, so radio has the longest, then it goes to microwaves, then infrared. Now, visible light, do you have to know the colors? Yes. Now, on your picture, unless it's first period, first period you did get the color ones, whereas everybody else got black and white ones, unfortunately. Um, I will make sure I have a color picture on the internet, so in case you want to print it off with a color printer, or you can at least look at it. But I'll upload it today but it goes Roy G. Biv. So from longest wavelength in the colors, it's red, orange, yellow, okay, Roy, G for green, blue, indigo, which is like a blue purple, and violet, okay? You do need to know the order of those colors. So on top of yours, if you have the black and white one, I would at least write Roy G. Biv so that you know, because you do have to know this, by the way. You have to know this in order from longest to shortest. I'm going to ask you questions about it. So when you get to the quiz, quickly write down the order from longest to shortest and then including the colors in there, and then you'll be fine. You'll pass the, the quiz really well because you'll have it in front of your face. No, you cannot. It's not open notes. And no, it's not open picture. Okay? So you have to know this picture. Well, after the visible light, which is what these colors are, then we have ultraviolet, then x-rays, and then gamma. Okay? Now, radio waves have the longest wavelengths and the lowest frequencies. So it's the longest wavelengths and lowest frequencies. While gamma rays, oh, did I miss radio waves? Yeah. Gamma rays have the highest frequencies and the shortest wavelengths. Okay, so longer and slower radio waves, higher and faster gamma rays, which means gamma rays are the most... They're the most hurtful. Radio waves, they don't hurt you at all. 
once you get if it's lower than visible light pretty much your skin can stop them and it's not harmful anything above visible light means your skin cannot stop it those way those rays can get into your body and can cause harm so ultraviolet x-rays and gamma rays will definitely cause harm to you whereas radio microwave and infrared do not okay now we can use our altered wave equations to calculate either the wavelength or the frequency of any and we're talking any em wave electromagnetic wave okay so let's try an example problem so example number one okay so we have microwaves are used to cook food and transmit information what is the wavelength of a microwave that has a frequency of 3.44 times 10 to the ninth hertz. Now, guys, hopefully you have the graphing calculators or the scientific calculators, because guess what? We get to do all kinds of math with scientific notation. Told you it would come back and haunt you. Okay, so first we're going to write our equation. We are looking for wavelength. So what is the wavelength? So I'm going to write my wavelength equation. And by the way, if you get these two variables, the nu and the lambda mix up, who cares? It says, as long as you put C above, you know, the speed of light above whatever number you're given, you're still going to come out with the right answer. So in this case, we're going to put 3.00 times 10 to the eighth meters per second. Please don't forget your units. And 3.44 times... 10 to the 9th hertz. Oh, yeah, that's a 9, by the way. Okay? This I need to see. If I don't see this, okay, I have to see this. And then you can write the answer. If I don't see that, you don't get the answer right. Now, when you do this in the calculator, you put parentheses around it. Okay? So, to put in the calculator, you would write, oops. Yeah, here. It's going to screw everything up. So you're going to put parenthesis there and parenthesis there, and then the divided by parenthesis there and parenthesis there in the calculator. And it makes it so much easier because then you get your answer. Your calculator comes out with your answer at 8.72 times 10 to the minus 2 meters. Okay? How do I know it's meters? Right here. Okay? So because we're using the speed of light at 3.00 times 10 to the eighth meters per second, when we calculate wavelength, we'll always be calculating meters. Okay, now if we were to do the other one, which on your practice problems tonight, you actually have to calculate frequency, you should be given meters. If you are not, you do have to convert it to meters. Okay, so that's that. Let's talk about the particle nature of light. Okay, when objects are heated, they emit glowing light. So let's go ahead and do the heated. Come on. Now, German physicist Max Planck studied this phenomenon. His study led him to, to conclude that matter can gain or lose energy only in small, spe specific amounts called quanta. And yes, I can't talk sometimes. Okay. A quantum is the minimum amount of energy that can be gained or lost by an atom. Okay. He went further and came up with an equation to calculate how much energy a quantum of light emitted has. And this is what he came up with. Okay. So H being Planck's constant. Okay. Frequency course is new and Planck's constant by the way is this number will you ever have to memorize it probably not I'll probably give that to you um, most of the time um, if it's a test then it might be written somewhere or you can write it on your index card if I decide to do an index card okay but that's Planck's constant so it's basically Planck's constant times the frequency of light now notice that this is energy of a quantum of light okay came Einstein and he's like well yeah that's kind of true but he decided to 
talk about light. He studied light, and he said, well, not only does it act like, you know, like a, a wave, but it also acts like a particle, which he called a photon. Now, a photon is a massless particle that carries a quantum of energy. So he was able to change the equation to E photon. Now, I don't know about you, but I really don't notice anything different. It's still E equals HV. No matter what you call E, whether it's a quantum of energy or a photon of energy, it's still the same thing. It is Planck's constant times the frequency. Okay, so that's mainly what you have to remember about all this. Let's try an example. Now, example two is, what is the energy? Okay, let's try the example. Example two, what is the energy of a photon from the violet portion of the sun's light if it has a frequency of 7.230 times 10 to the 14th hertz? Okay, so we know the equation we're going to be using. Okay, it's going to be E, e equals H, V. Now, H, of course, is Planck's constant, and that's known. So 626 times 10 to the minus. Okay, I don't think I was recording, so hopefully you guys got this. E equals HV, and then E equals 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34 times, and then of course we have our frequency, which is 7.230 times 10 to the 14th hertz. When you multiply them together, you get 4.79 one times 10 to the ninth, negative 19th. And energy is always joules. Okay, this is always your energy. Okay, when we do these equations. Now, there is one other equation. And that's because of the speed of light. So sometimes you are given wavelength rather than frequency. And when you're given wavelength rather than frequency, we have to put in the wave equation, C over lambda, in place of the um, nu. Okay, so, oops, next slide. Okay, so what, what's going to happen is it's, this is the new equation. So if you're given a wavelength, so if I want to know what the energy of a light wave would have, and I'm giving you a wavelength, you would use this equation. Okay, so let's, for example, so we'll call this example three. What is the energy of a photon that has a wavelength of We'll do 3.14 times 10 to the, oh, I don't know. Let me look for something that I can use. Let's try to look on the paper, your visible light thing. Wavelength of 3.14 times 10 to the second meters. Okay? That's a two, by the way. So, what you would do... Okay, my thing won't move. Come on, add another slide, please. Go. Okay, so now we're going to do E equals the 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34. Then we're going to do times 3.00 times 10 to the 8th, all divided by... 3.14 times 10 to the second. Now, give me a second to do it on the calculator. And we get the energy is 6.331 times 10 to the minus 28th joules. Okay, practice problems tonight. Practice problems. Your practice problems are from your packet, actually. Okay, I want you to do 3.7, 3.9, and 3.11. And we'll check them tomorrow. Thanks, bye.